Question 9b states, for the same set of scores, if the scores are a sample, what are the variance and standard deviation? So to calculate this, um, for simplicity, we're going to use the, um, the computational formula again. Um, so I'm just copying out the numbers from part A. Normally, you wouldn't need to do this. It's just that I ran out of space. So the sum of squares, uh, so we can use also the sum of x is still going to be 20. The sum of x squared is still going to be 100. So we take the computational formula, divide by little n because we have a sample now. At this point, it's just semantics. Um, minor, minor changes in the symbols. So we take 100, subtract 20 squared, divided by 5. So that's 100, 400 divided by 5. 100 subtract 80 is 20. So what you can see here is that it doesn't matter up until this is step three of the calculation. Um, calculating the sum of squares doesn't change if you have a population or a sample. So if you go back to chapter four, question 9a, the sum of squares is the same. Where it differs is in the calculation of the variance and the standard deviation. So the variance is equal to the sum of squares divided by n minus 1. So 20 divided by 5 minus 1. 20 divided by 4, which is 5. And then the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So this part is the same. What it differs is in calculating the variance. And so that's equal to the square root of 5 which is equal to 2.24.